Oh, oh. <laughs> Don't touch anything. It's all a bit yuck. <laughs> it's the seagulls, I suppose. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Used to be a rubber on the end of that pencil. I think I must have eaten it. <laughs> Still, it's high in fibre, isn't it? Are you staying at this hotel, too? Are you Timothy Lumsden? Yes, has there been a complaint? <laughs> sorry, I mean, have I done something wrong, I mean? Jennifer Blenkinsop. I'm sorry? I'm Jennifer. Well, you ought to remember. You said you'd meet me at the Moo Cal Nupa. You said you had a Vespa and that we'd go and see And God Created Woman with Bridget Bardot. Miss Wimborne's class. You were in charge of the nature table. <laughs> you didn't even turn up. No, that was my mother. She thought that Bridget Bardot might bring on maturity too soon, you know. <laughs> As a matter of fact, I do remember the first BB film. My voice broke when I was buying an ice cream. <laughs> yes, you did have a terrible mother, didn't you? Yes, God rest her soul. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, 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 don't worry. Don't worry. By Joe, you certainly haven't you filled out. <laughs> Since you were 11, anyway. Huh? You were the prettiest girl in 3C, really. I can say that now. Listen, um... Uh, what are you doing tonight? Yeah, night bombing. Okay. Oh, no, forget it. Cancel, cancel, cancel. Don't worry. You spoke of prior. Well, we all are, one way or another. Sorry. No, it doesn't matter. Don't worry. What are you doing in Eastbourne? Well, as a matter of fact, I, um... The Librarians' Conference. What? The Librarians' Conference? What? <laughs> rows and rows of dreary little men in tweed jackets with leather patches in their elbow, belly aching about cutbacks. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm here on my honeymoon, as a matter of fact. Eastbourne in March? Well, my first wedding, you know, we went to Hawaii. And I thought, funny sort of way, I thought, Honolulu, what is it after all, you know? <laughs> slough with waves, really. I must be keeping you from your bride. No, don't worry, she's on hold. She'll tread water till I get back. We're slowing to see you, anyway. You won't be late. Uh, oh. oh, this Hello. is my brother, Mike. Oh, brother. Oh. Yes, we've come down to visit our aunt. She's in hospital. Oh, I see. Oh, well, brother, that's different. I mean, we... Come on, if we're not the first ones in a visiting time, you know what she's like. Uh, look, why don't you and I see each other tomorrow night? But you're on your honeymoon. Well, officially, yes, you know, but I mean, it's a very, <laughs> very open marriage, you know. <laughs> it's a very open honeymoon, to be honest. <laughs> she's already had a bit of a fling with a vicar in the vestry when I wasn't looking. <laughs> in the vestry? Well, you know, we're very adult, really. I mean, you know, I used to let it hang out in the 60s, and quite frankly, it's still hanging out. What are you doing out here? There's a dew drop on your nose. <laughs> Good evening. Blow. I don't want to blow, Mother. <laughs> you brought your mother on your honeymoon? <laughs> honeymoon? Timothy, have you been fibbing to the neighbours? It's very nice to meet you, Mrs. Um... We're here for the library conference, you know. <laughs> oh, that'll be room service with the Lucas aid. <laughs> he needs so much building up. <laughs> Honeymoon, I almost believed you. You haven't changed a bit. I have changed. Honestly, I have. I will change. I, Jennifer, I will. Oh. Ugh. <laughs> I think it was a seagull, Mother. <laughs> and there she was, Moo. Jennifer Blenkinsop. On the next balcony, standing there, a shaft of moonlight. The girl I'd let slip through my fingers. Well, you've done it again now, haven't you? Sugar and derision. Hasn't Mother ever heard of oven cleaner? Yeah, she puts it in the teacups to stop them furling up. <laughs> you know, this oven is so dirty, it's lethal. If you put your head in here, you wouldn't need to turn the gas on. Gordon Bennett, there are stalactites hanging down. Oh. That's probably from when the turkey exploded. <laughs> you know, when she stuffed it with lentils. <laughs> In a magical way, you know, I think she felt it too. The turkey? No, no, Jennifer I'm talking about. Jennifer, you know. She looked at me and I looked at her. The world stopped. Somebody somewhere was tinkling on the piano. Noel Coward, no doubt. Muriel, we're talking about magical moments here. Look at that. They don't make screws like that anymore. <laughs> that was left over for when I converted the chicken coop into an air raid shelter. <laughs> Fell over when the cat sat on it. She's become quite an exquisite creature now. Well, she could do with a flea collar, though. Not, <laughs> not the cat, Father. Hopping about all over the place. Don't walk on the red rug without gumboots. Look, Father, you're not <laughs> my 
exciting story, you know. It was transcendental. Language, Timothy? I was transmogrified. So was the cat. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Please stop talking about the cat, Father. Where's your sense of romance? That cat gets more romance than you do, and she's been down. <laughs> Moo, please, I do have rather tender feelings. So has the cat. Howl the place down. <laughs> oh, that'll be the post. Ships that pass in the night, I suppose. It's about time you hailed one of those passing ships and clambered aboard. You do not clamber aboard Jennifer Blenkinsop. <laughs> she used to come top in domestic science. She got a gold star for her dumplings. <laughs> she used to live over our way somewhere. Had a bloke called Sandy. Did you get her phone number? Well, it was the first meeting, really, wasn't it? And the last, the way that you go on. Now, she must be in the phone. No, no, listen, listen. Look, let what? face facts, you know. What use am I to womankind? Failing powers. I can't even waggle my ears anymore. Women do not expect you to waggle your ears. You waggle other things. Oof, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, you know the facts of life. Oh, you are. No, he doesn't, Muriel. Thank you very much. <laughs> and I will not have people sneaking into the house and cleaning up behind my back. Timothy, has the milkman been? Been? <laughs> well, I don't know, Mother. It seemed rather a personal question to ask. <laughs> There's hair in your ears. Borrow your father's tweezers. Muriel, make some tea. The devil finds work for idle hands. What, you mean he's running some sort of youth opportunity scheme? <laughs> oh, very Tommy Handley. Your hair needs washing. Fill the basin. I'll do it myself, Mother. Last week you held me under so long, my entire life flashed in front of my eyes. <laughs> well, that can't have been very interesting. Where are you going? To make it more interesting. Uh, Phyllis, my dearest darling, guess oh. what wonderful news. Goodness me, he's overdosed on Phyllis Ann. <laughs> He did just what he said he'd do, Claude. He's invited us out to Australia. Three weeks, all money paid, all expenses, oh. and everything. You and me, Phyllis. Second honeymoon. Oh, that is wonderful. Well, you lucky thing. Oh. <laughs> Claude's the one I should have married. Give us a ring soon as past, you old drunk, and I'll lay in a lorry load of Alka-Seltzer. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the sense of humor. <laughs> Good old Claude. <laughs> he still carries a bit of a torch for me. <laughs> well, let's go and ring him then. The middle of the night in Australia. So we'll catch him in, won't we? Yes. <laughs> they go, you'll have three weeks on your own, eh? Nudge, nudge. Freedom to see Jennifer. <gasps> bit of a responsibility. Why? Well, I don't know how to work the washing machine. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry I'm late, Tim. Don't worry, don't worry. I got one in for you. A pint of Australian lager. Get you in practice. You know what Uncle Claude's like. <laughs> Here's to you, Claude. <laughs> <laughs> Damn generous of him. Yes. Well, your mother's down at the travel agent, making a kerfuffle. <laughs> She's trying to get a seat facing the engine. <laughs> She's just not used to travel, is she, you know? Do you remember when we went to the Isle of Wight? She gave me so many quells, my deck chair collapsed, and I never noticed. <laughs> well, I could have gone to Oz a long time before this, you know. My old pal, Dingo McCloud, wanted me to go back with him after the war. <laughs> Good old Dingo. <laughs> you saved my life, you know. When I was attacked by a lopsick camel. Yes, I remember you telling me, yes. He took him out with a couple of bricks from behind. Oh, I told you. <laughs> well, not so much that one, no. But you've told me the other one quite a lot. You know, the other one about Oh, Dingo. yes, 1945, when Dingo and I were guarding the Suez Canal. Yes, that's the one, that's the one. You've told me that a lot of times, Father. <laughs> yeah, yes, that was it. Uh, 1945, it was. Dingo was, uh, and I, we were guarding the Suez Canal. <laughs> Well, there was nothing to do, just uh, lie down in the desert and sunbathe, in the buff, of course. Baked black we were. From time to time, we'd wave to a troop ship as it went by. <laughs> and then one day... Yeah, then one day, <laughs> this ship came by and he was flying the Australian flag. And up jumped old Dingo and he was waving with everything he got. <laughs> <laughs> Then there was this screaming. Oh, yes, there's all this screaming and thousands of people running. Well, you know, the ship was full of ATS girls, all rushing to have a look. Poor old Dingo didn't know where to put himself. He had to fall flat on his face, bang onto a scorpion. Well, up he jumped, he's running round and round in circles, and damn me if the fella steering the ship doesn't run it aground. 
But then a week later, you found yourself in this bar in Portside. Yeah, that's it. A week later, in this bar in Portside, this lovely girl came up to me and she said, I know who you are, she said, by the suntan you've got. You're the bloke who's chasing around starkers in the desert. I was on that boat. Oh, I'm very impressed with your work. Will you have a drink? <laughs> and you know what I said, Timothy? Do you know what I said? Oh, sorry, sorry. Um, <laughs> yes, yes, I do, yes. Yes, I do know what you said. You said, no, that was Dingle McLeod over there in the corner. And all I had to say was, yes, it was me. Most beautiful creature on God's earth and I handed it over to Dingo Bloody McLeod. <laughs> well, you see the point of the story? Yes. Yes, I do. Funnily enough, I do see the point of the story. Will you excuse me, Father? I've got some shopping to do. Yes, I do. I do see the point <laughs> of the story. You do? Good. I'm jammed if I do. <laughs> in, Mother. Not her, it's me. Good Lord. You look like Madam Butterfly. <laughs> well, what are you doing in here again? You are going out tonight with Jennifer Blankensop. I fixed it. Look, no, why don't you keep out of my affairs? Honestly? What affairs? You don't have any affairs. Moo, I am not ready for Jennifer Blankensop yet. I've got to learn mad dogs and Englishmen. I've got to buy a sunbed, get a cravat. I've got to mug up on the joys of sex. Look, she is not going out tonight, and she is waiting for you to give her a ring. And she's not married. Have you got a cigarette? Yes, a cigarette. I must get a silver case to go with the gown, of course. Yes, a cigarette, by all means. <laughs> Don't rest the minor. How old are these? I haven't smoked for a long time. There we are. Ah, I've got to get a cigarette holder, too, to go with those. Look, there is Jennifer's number. Go and give her a ring. Come on. Look, let us be sophisticated about this. If she has been unmarried all these years, you don't think she's perhaps a little bit odd, do you? You are not married. Are you odd? No, not at all, of course. Well, nor is she. She lived with this bloke for years. Sandy Ionides, he's not in the picture now. Lived with? Lived with? You mean she's not as, uh, you know, pure as the driven, um... No, she is not pure as the driven. But she's the best bit of slush you can hope for now. <laughs> no! How? No, you say? That's very nice. You're 45, Tim. I'm a very young 45. <laughs> I still take halib orange. We can go and now. Look, this Sandy Ionides fellow. Do you, I mean, what is he like physically? I mean, is he big, you know, brawny? I mean, you know, six foot or something like that? No, does it matter? No, not to me at all. No, not at all. <sighs> He is five foot one. He's not as tall as you are. Oh, good. Ooh. Excellent. Wonderful. <laughs> Tally-ho! Oh, go and ring her. There's just one thing. You don't think I'm going to be too tall for her, do you? Oh, get out! Get out! <laughs> Lord's place doesn't get a mention here. It must be more or less there. What's that huge snake? Snake? Where? <laughs> if they have snakes, I'm not going. That's not a snake. That's the S in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> you know something, uh, Phyllis? They got a, a completely different set of stars down there in the sky. Do they have decent hairdressers? <laughs> well, Claude says they've got a rotary. A rotary clothesline? No, a rotary club. It's very go ahead. They even let women in on Anzac Day. Shh! Timothy's making a phone call. Well, they're bound to have a hairdresser's. <laughs> I mean, after all, it's not the other side of the world, is it? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, you're listening in. Say something. Keep talking. Eh? Anything. Your usual rubbish. It doesn't matter. Just keep talking. Oh, fair enough. You know, I see this trip as a second honeymoon. Bondi Beach in the moonlight. <laughs> Do you remember how you used to slip your hand into my number one field dressing pocket? <laughs> Squeeze my thigh whenever Anne Ziegler and Webster came on. <laughs> we'll gather lilacs. Shut in up. <laughs> Well, you can forget about Australia for a start. We're not going. What? 
He's making a date with that woman on the balcony. I knew there was something in the wind. He's excited, laughing. He's jingling his pennies. <laughs> and Muriel's there, egging him on. But why aren't we going to Australia? Well, I'm not having him throwing himself away on some hussy when I'm 20,000 miles away. That wasn't chance, the meeting like that. She was lying in wait for him. And Claude, ringing up out of the blue. Jennifer, put him up to it. They want me out of the way. I know the feeling. <laughs> I heard that. I suppose you realize what will happen if Timothy gets married. We can't let Claude down. I mean, he's buying seats at the little theater at Ayers Rock. <laughs> Derek Limo in Henry V. <laughs> if Timothy gets married, we shall have to move. Eh? And the next people in here will bulldoze the compost, dig up the marrows. Well, I, I take the marrows with me. You can't take marrows to sheltered housing. Sheltered housing? That's right. Sheltered housing. Every time you wet yourself, a bell rings in the warden's bungalow. <laughs> oh, God. I should be a widow in six months. Two minutes ago, I was like a dog with two tails. And you can be again. You must tell Timothy, man to man, that he must never see this Jennifer creature again. And if he promises properly, then we can go to Australia. Timothy! Timothy! If he so much as lays a finger on that girl, I'm going to leave all my premium bonds to Dr. David Owen. <laughs> <laughs> you nip this girl thing in the bud or no Australia. Oh, oh, Muriel. Muriel, just the person I wanted to see. Now, you're the bee's knees when it comes to cleaning the house. I want to ask your advice. The cat has done something in the airing cupboard. <laughs> oh, uh, Tim, uh, this girl... Uh, Jennifer, you mean Jennifer? Yes, yes. Uh, nice girl? Um, well, so they say, but I have hopes. <laughs> make her happy, could she? You make her happy. Well, yes, I've never really asked. Well, yes, yes, yes. Pity. What? Pity. Who oh, well, get stuck into it, lad. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. This Foster's is about as near as I'll ever get to Australia. You don't know what you're missing. My brother Claude says Nunga Valley, where he lives, is absolutely beaut. Well, he's a bloody palm. No Aussie say beaut anymore. <laughs> I'll have a large uh, port of brandy if I may, Denzel. All right. Hello, Father. Oh, God, Timothy. Is that a wing collar? Yes, yes, it's the Jimmy White look, you know, the snooker. <laughs> yeah, Jennifer will like it. I'm off to meet Jennifer at the Moo Cow Milk Bar. 30 years too late, but I hope she's going to be there. Well, I'm sorry, you uh, yes. don't know Sandy, do you? Sandy? Sandy Ionides uh, plays for the London Australians. Well, hi, pleased to meet you. Can't be Sandy Ionides. He's only five foot one, Sandy Ionides. <laughs> Can't be two people called Sandy Ionides, surely. I mean, this fellow's. A... Would you, excuse me, would you, uh, if I mentioned a name, um, uh, would the name Blenkinsop mean anything to you? Jennifer. It is him. It's him. I thought it was. You know, her type, big, physically. Moo said he was five foot one, round the chest. <laughs> <laughs> well, so much for me. <laughs> Tim, we one port and brandy. Ah, that's for you, Denzel, if you don't mind. Could I have a pint for father and ten for giant haystacks here? <laughs> <laughs> Change your plans. I'm going to spend the evening at home. I got a bit of crochet on the go. <laughs> Who needs women after all? <laughs> no, no. Bye bye. <laughs> Has he, uh, what's the expression? Uh, has he been released in the community? <laughs> no. <laughs> His mother's still got him. <laughs> Orange one's first. Red one's next. Timothy? Yes, mother? <laughs> Why haven't you gone out? Oh, I see. You're going out later. You're going to spend the night with her. No, Mother, I'm not going out at all. Well, the car's not working, so don't... You're not going out? No. It's all off. You know, I didn't... I didn't measure up to Jennifer's expectations, I'm afraid. You didn't? <laughs> what about her? Blenkinsop. I looked up Blenkinsop in the Book of Surnames. The Blenkinsoops came over with William of Orange. They shoveled mud. 
<laughs> Unskilled brown collar workers, whereas our family go all the way back to Pep in the Less. Pep in the Less? Why has it got to be Pep in the Less, Mother? Couldn't that be descended from the lofty Lumsdens, you know, <laughs> who invented the street lamps and lit them without using a ladder? <laughs> so all this Jennifer nonsense is over with? Yep. I'm going to bring you a nice glass of warm milk. And I've got some special eggs, not just free range. Eggs from hens with names. <laughs> and I'm going to whisk them all up with sugar and milk and make you a lovely horse's sneeze. Uh -huh. And I'll bring the radio up and we can listen to Max Jaffer, who's mother's best, biggest boy. <laughs> God knows. <laughs> I'm dreadfully afraid it is. Well, it's me, Jennifer. Jennifer, dear heart, what are you doing here on the Côte d'Azur? You've changed. I know, they've rung the dinner gong. I mean, you're awfully tall. Yes, I know, I broke a leg skiing and they left me in traction far too long. Oh, Timothy, I'm on my honeymoon. Oh, what a ghastly coincidence am I. That's awfully awful, isn't it, meeting again like this? Oh, dear Jennifer, I've always loved you. Still do, always will. <laughs> oh, heavens. And I, you too, my darling, darling. You mustn't talk like that. Really, you mustn't. It's the heady scent of the mimosa, the hint of a warm wind from Africa, taking us up, whirling us round in some mad, crazy nuts, making us say things we've always wanted to say, but somehow never dared to. <laughs> so right. You always were so right. Do you remember, dear heart, that little song I wrote for you? <laughs> in our little cabin in the west, I lay my head upon your lovely breast. Jennifer, hey ho! <laughs> Blast your wonderful eyes, I'm only human. Oh, dear heart, don't fight it any longer. Let's run away together. Forget your husband. What's his name? I forget. Very good, well done. <laughs> Kiss me, you mad, impetuous creature. <laughs> oh, it's not real. It's all a dream. Well, of course it isn't real. I'm daydreaming. No, you're not. I am. I'm dreaming. I'm upstairs lying on the bed. Why? I'm down at the Moo Cow Milk Bar waiting for you. Well, I'm not coming to the Moo Cow. Why not? Well, because of that Sandy Ionides person. Seven foot tall and built like a barn door. <laughs> Sandy Ionides. <laughs> what? Never? Not once. Oh, <laughs> well. I'm all right in that department, I can assure you. They're... Look, we're dreaming out here. Open the window. Open the window. What are you doing cleaning the windows at this time of night? Open. Open. What are you doing here, Moo? Oh. They won't let me in the house. Come on, you're going to be late. Listen, you fibbed to me. I ran into that Sandy Ionides. He's not five foot one at all. I only wanted to encourage you. Well, it doesn't matter now, innit? I've just heard. <laughs> he never made a laugh. You know, not once. You just told me that. What? Well, I made a laugh at Eastbourne, you know. <sighs> Will you please get a move on? Oh. I'm up a ladder in a skirt and there's an east wind blowing. <laughs> all right, all right. Tally ho, I'll be with you in a minute. Don't you worry. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Don't rush. Mustn't forget the book. <laughs> the joys of sex. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wait a minute. It's the wrong book. Come on! <laughs> Management of a small holding. <laughs> no, it's not. It's not the wrong book at all. No. Oh, oh. 
slipped out of my hand. <laughs> Phyllis, I've decided something. There's a star in the east. Who blushed? <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing it on the compost again. <laughs> now, you may choose to stay here, but I'm going to Australia willy-nilly. <clears throat> what, willy? Whether you're coming or not. After all, Claude is my brother. Of course I'm coming. Timothy doesn't need me now. He's not going on with this Jennifer business. He's upstairs, in bed. Oh, is he? Oh. Oops. <laughs> I must, must take it easy with that lager. <laughs> but I, I thought I saw him out the front there with Muriel. They didn't come down the stairs. You left that ladder out again. Muriel is helping him to elope. It's high time that boy got among the Sheilas. I'll deal with you later. Australia is off. <laughs> Starting so well recently. I expect you're missing these. <laughs> oh, my God. The spark plugs. Of course. Now, why didn't I take those out? Now, Mother, let's be reasonable, shall we? Give me the plugs. Certainly. You'll find them in the shrubbery. It's gone eight. I don't suppose you'll have waited. Come and watch television. There's Jim will fix it. Mother, you can only push me so far. I'm not going to push you at all. You let Muriel do it. <laughs> Push. That's it. You can push me. It's downhill all the way. <laughs> you can't do that. You mustn't do that. It's against the law. Muriel! Timothy! <laughs> ah, the man they couldn't stop. As long as she's waited a couple of minutes. Steering rock. Where's the keys? <laughs> Did I put them? Must have broke them. <laughs> Jennifer! I was coming to find you. Did the brakes fail? The brakes. I knew I'd forgotten something. The brakes. <laughs> Who needs brakes? From now on, Jennifer, it is full speed ahead. It isn't the Moo Cow Milk Bar anymore. It's a building society. Let's go mad. We'll open an account. <laughs> Rubbish, 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 rubbish. Oh, rubbish. Have fun, grow in confidence, attract girls, learn the piano accordion. Rubbish. Rubbish. What is this? Oh, look at this. One rubber dog bone for dog now passed away. Rubbish. 
learn ping-pong the Johnny Leach way. <laughs> All this rubbish. Now, what is this? Over here, let's see. Oh, one Mickey Mouse gas mask. <laughs> Slightly perished. Ooh, terrible. Ah, rubbish. Ru oh, goodness me. PC 49 handcuffs. Goodness me. I feel they're strong. Made things to last in those days. Tim? Ah. What on earth are you doing up here? I'm having a conversion. Not Buddhism again. <laughs> I mean, not me. The loft. You know, I'm creating a sort of bachelor space. See? Over there, there's going to be the crackling gas log fire. In that corner. Over in this corner, that will be for mutual massage and assisted showers. <laughs> nice circular waterbed with ceiling mirrors. <laughs> Slightly magnifying, of course. <laughs> what is the point of all that? Well, for Jennifer, mainly, you know. We've been going steady now for 27 days. She's not going to be impressed by a lot of Playboy tat. Playboy tat? Yeah, this is habitat. Not play oh, I forgot. Hat rack. Tit for tat. I'm firing on all cylinders today. I'm so excited about the whole idea. You know. What oh. makes you think that Mother is going to let you change anything up here? Uh, that cobweb, it has been here since 1957, to my certain knowledge. That is decor move. Father sprays that silver every Christmas. Have you seen Jennifer tonight? What? No, no. Jennifer's no far too busy. I've got to get all this rubbish all collected. I've got to, I've got to skip coming, you know, to collect it all. Oh, he's got it. Oh, love it. Little wabbit. <laughs> I used to cuddle that something rotten when I was little. You should be cuddling Jennifer something rotten. What are you waiting for? I'm not waiting. I'm not waiting. You're hanging back. Now, what is it? I'm not hanging back at all. Well, there are one or two points, be honest, you know. She, I mean, she hasn't, she hasn't exactly, you know, saved herself for me, has she? <laughs> not what? Well, she hasn't, you know, locked away her maiden treasure, you know. Oh, <laughs> you pompous pranny. You haven't saved yourself for her, have yes, you? Yes, I have. Have you? Well, I think I have. <laughs> you think you have? Well, it was a bit foggy. I don't know. <laughs> Look at this rag rug. Goodness me. Do you know, I made that when I had galloping alopecia. <laughs> it's her experience that frightens you, isn't it? This old rattle of yours, too. I'm not picking that up for you. Is it the fact that she is experienced? Well, I suppose a novice would have been better, I suppose. A nun, you mean? Nothing. You're 45! You've got grey hair! I have not. Where? Oh, yes, you have. You've got grey hair? I have not. Where? I'll show where? you yours if you show me oh, mine. What's Come going on? on? You two playing mothers and fathers? <laughs> what brings you up here, mother? Planning to hang upside down from a beam till sunset. <laughs> Be quiet. I know what you two are doing. I'm not even dead, and you're dividing the spoils. Spoils? You're going to have to pay people to take this lot away. Nonsense! These Reader's Digest condensed books are worth a fortune. Oh. And look, this bookend is Georgian. Georgian? Which George would that be, Mother? George Best? <laughs> Cheap folder, old back chat. Oh, is that a postcard from Dad? Oh, yes. It's a picture of a person holding up a dead shark. I don't know why. It's his first news from Australia. Dear Phyllis, just a quick line to remind you the MOT is up on the 4th. Get young Tim to turn the apples in the apple store. Won't take long, there are only three. <laughs> you probably noticed we need a new coke hod, love, SL, and four kisses for someone. Well, reading between the lines, he's out every night with Claude Blotto. Well, why not, poor old devil? P.S. Language, Timothy. <laughs> oh, this came for you. Mm -hmm. You know I don't like plain brown envelopes. It makes the neighbours talk. <laughs> well, aren't you going to open it? I will, a quiet moment. Well, this is a quiet moment. It might be private. Exactly. One of his private letters was delivered next door. They opened it. Naked girls in scanty combinations. 
It was a thermal underwear catalogue, Mother. <laughs> I had to resign from the bridge club. Dear Mr. Lumsden, we would be glad to welcome you to our weekend course. Dates are unchanged. Oh, that's good. What weekend course? The library course, Mother. So I shall be in Seven Oaks this weekend. Seven Oaks, oh, yes. A small hotel with Jennifer. Mr. and Mrs. Smith, no doubt. It's got nothing to do with Jennifer, Mother. It is library business. Upper management, you know, the ladder. The promotion ladder? No, the ladder, ladder, you know, for the top shelves. You know. <laughs> the people want to look up things, which is why I don't wear a kilt. <laughs> I've got a kill. That's another very good reason. Now, are you going to be popping along, Mother? Well, I want everything left exactly as it is. You two can play in the garden. Oh, and Muriel, on your way out, take off the dustbin lid, would you? Well, I only just stopped and put it back on. Well, take it off again. I want next door to see that we're the sort of people that can afford to leave the meat on the chicken. <laughs> from the library. Please, please. Self-assertion weekends PLC. Please. Ma Thank you for your 160 pounds. Mo, well, please, I am the eldest. Thing. 160 pounds. Now, you could have spent that on Jennifer. I have spent it on Jennifer in a sense. You know, I may require to be, you know, self-assertive. I may, you know, require to be sort of confident. With her. You don't need courses to impress Jennifer. She likes you as you are. Does she? Yes. And how do you know? She told me. Did she? Did she? What did she say? Tell me the exact words. Tell me what she said. She said, she said, mm -hmm. that she doesn't mind your lack of experience. No. It makes her feel 15 again. <laughs> oh. Oh. Who the hell are these people? The Institute of Asserterology. <laughs> Director of Studies, Dr. Buzz McGoober. Bloody. He's, he's got letters after his name. T-S-J-R. Brackets, Bangkok. Sargasso University. Sargasso. It's seaweed. You've been conned. All these courses you keep taking. Be taller, be richer, be somebody else, beekeeping. What you need is a whole weekend on how not to be conned all the time. How not to be conned was fully booked. <laughs> What's your name? I'm afraid it's Brown. Oh, no, you're not afraid. And we only use first names here on a sort of this weekend. So we try again. Hi, I'm Angeli. What's your name? Well, then, I suppose it's Martha. Martha! Oh, that's a fine name to have. Martha. Now, do step into the lounge, Martha, and meet the very wonderful fellow students on your course. Oh, uh, no, 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 no. <laughs> you go, Martha. Report to Buzz Magoober. Is this a person or a computer? <laughs> He's a highly fulfilled, well motivated counselor. Oh, lucky him. <laughs> I am young Buzz McClumson, a very warm human being. <laughs> Hello, sorry. Are you sure you have the right course, sir? Relaxation for middle management is an upper school for? No, self assertiveness. This is what I'm here for. Yes, indeed. Shall I lead the way? Have a nice day. Don't be a stranger now. <laughs> and to pursue my bear. <laughs> Hello, good evening, and welcome. My name is Timothy Lumsden, which is an anagram of Dumlo T. My side. <laughs> well, who are we when we're at home? Or who are we when we're here? <laughs> 
No name. No little name. Oh, what a dull place this is, isn't it? <laughs> oh, coffee. Wonderful. Now, I was all following. <laughs> all we like sheep, as the saying goes. Though preferably, not all over the carpet. Now, I was wondering if we had a little... <laughs> Well, it is now, anyway. <laughs> I wonder if this is Café Olé or Café Olé. What are you hanging about for? Get stuck into the biscuits. <laughs> ah, there we are. Aha! Ah, 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 ah. This, is it not, is what is called a visual aid. Shush, shush. Don't, don't, shush, shush. Me? No, you don't need to say that here. We're all friends. Shall we all sit down? <laughs> Shall we all sit down? Of course we can all sit down. Goodness me. It's a free country. <laughs> we have the technology. <laughs> Shall we all sit down? <laughs> I see. School SWAT writing to the book already. It's a free country. <laughs> I said that. Yes, sir. Sir. Oh, you think I'm in charge? No, I'm just an ordinary person like you. Well, perhaps not quite as ordinary as that. <laughs> <laughs> Only this morning I rang the council and ordered a skit for the rubbish. The man called me sir. Or was it squire or chief or captain? <laughs> oh, look at this, this glow, isn't it? Not fast. Oh, now, this does take me back. Ready for the off at the starting block. <laughs> <laughs> Who the hell fired that gun? Uh, nobody? Uh, that's me, by the way. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> <laughs> this is it. Don't stop. Keep going. Don't look. Just drive normally. Park there. There. <laughs> I thought so. The upstairs curtains are drawn. Seven Oaks, my backside is here. <laughs> they might as well have written it up in big letters. Phyllis Lumsden's boy is here, upstairs, doing things. <laughs> Might be another boy. Three of them? A dummy, Jatwa? I don't even know what it is. I'm going in. Now, you wait here. If I'm not back in ten minutes, Darcy... Yes? Well, you'll just have to wait a little longer, <laughs> won't you? Easy, four pints. <laughs> Building him up, I suppose. <laughs> Cheap little sound. Not enough taste for a ding dong. <laughs> well, Christian Aid, I'll get the envelope. Don't be evasive. <laughs> I'm Mrs. Lumsden. Lum oh, Timothy's mother. Yes, Timothy's mother. I brought his clean underpants. <laughs> well, he does wear them out so quickly, doesn't he? Pulling them on and off. I always iron them while he's wearing them. It's quicker, even if it does make him squirm. Why does he want them here? I imagine he'll be having a bath. Or is that where you keep the coal? Timothy, in my bath? When? I believe the usual phrase is afterwards. After what? Really? Do you want me to spell it out on the doorstep? Yes, please. Well... <laughs> Why don't I come in and have a cup of tea? Because you haven't been asked. <laughs> I want a word with Timothy. I don't know where he is. I've only just got out Number of bed. Four. Coming! I've been up all night with my mother, who isn't at all well. Your mother? Yes, my mother. You mean Timothy isn't here? No. Oh. Well, you won't be wanting these. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, to me, a couple of silly billies. <laughs> Speak for yourself. The fact of the matter is, Timothy's not ready for women yet. Who says so? I'll put it another way. Timothy will never have children. Why ever not? Because I say so. <laughs> Excuse me. I'm taking my car out first. Yes. All right. Bye. Well, Tim boy, I guess this course was you what the Marines were to Prince Edward. You just weren't ready for it. But we wish you all the best in the future. Oh, get me, Bob. I like that. You too. Plunked. Well, who needs certificates? Well, Sort of goodbye, then, I suppose. Well, yes. 
No, you know, I've learned something this weekend. I really... You are a very beautiful girl, Mark. And you mustn't go around thinking you're not. Yeah. Let your hair down. Down? Yes, down. Why not? All right. There you are, you see? <laughs> and you don't need your spectacles either. Take them off, hold them on, and put them in your hand. Should I? Yes, why not? All right, then. <laughs> There you are. You see, you see, you are beautiful. Now, on your way. Thank you, Timothy. Spectacles are just a frame of mind. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. This is bearable. What are you doing? Oh, hello, Muriel. Just giving your mother a hand. She's lying down. You're a guest. Let me do that. Oh, no, he gives me something to no, do. Please. Muriel, leave Mrs. Barable alone. She's my friend, not yours. <laughs> Playing Yuri Gagarin with my teaspoons. <laughs> now then. Jennifer phoned me this afternoon. Jennifer? Isn't that the girl we went to Be see quiet. this morning? <laughs> Muriel, you haven't the bosoms to carry off horizontal stripes. You were at her place, hoping to <clears throat> catch them at it, weren't you? You're a fine one to talk, you and Kevin. Before you were even engaged, you and him, in his bubble car. It was a mesh smith. It had one seat behind the other. That didn't stop you. Why can't you leave people alone? Why can't you? You've got a home to go to, haven't you? I am waiting here until Timothy comes. Well, you can wait in silence. Nobody's going to talk to you. How old is your little boy now, Muriel? <laughs> He's six. Be quiet. He is 13. Don't split hairs. Oh. Oh. Oh, you're all very, uh... Oh, dear. Is it the cat, has it, finally? Ah. Uh, but I thought she did look a bit wobbly on Friday. But she is 11, after all, which is 309 in human terms, so you No, must... it's not that cat, it's Muriel. Now sit there. I'm sure you would like to be getting home now, Mrs. Barrow. Oh, all right. You're going out. But where? With when? Jennifer. When? Five minutes ago. What are you talking about? Look, I invited Jennifer out with you and me and Kevin. Yes. Only Kevin and me won't turn up. Yes. So you two can be on your own. <gasps> night, night. Bye-bye, Mrs. Barrow. Bye-bye. Well, I'd better go and change. Then. No, I mean, don't all... change. No. Just go. But where to? Railway Arms Colliery. Now go before Mother tries stopping. I that, Muriel. Timothy, sit in your place. Napkin. No, no napkin. Just go. Get away. Well, I haven't got any money, Muriel. Oh, bloody hell. Take the whole bag. Go. A handbag? In the railway arms? <laughs> Place is full of shunters. <laughs> Sit down. Get up. Come on, assert yourself. What happened at self-assertion? I failed. Nobody fails. Well, I did. Oh, I'm beaten. I'm going home. What a good idea, Muriel. Timsy and I are going to have a lovely evening. A game of snakes and ladders. And watch Paul Daniels and you can hold my wall. No, thank you, Mother. Are you asserting yourself? No, I can't stand Paul Daniels. <laughs> I'm going out, Mother. I'm ordering you to stay. Good night, Mother. How right you are, Timothy. You go and see your girlfriend. Oh, I knew this moment would come. A mother has to give in gracefully. Ah. Enjoy yourself, Timothy. It's a trap. Don't be cynical. Mother's being generous, that's what you're doing. Just make Mother proud of you. Are your nails clean? Handy pandies? Ah. What? Oh. What? what? There's something in the corner of your eye. Look uh. up. Down. Close your eyes. <laughs> you try hanky panky now. Oh, Mother! <laughs> <laughs> Do I take your coat, sir? Um, uh, no, thank you. It's all right. Looks like rain. <laughs> thank you very much. Oh, Jennifer, sorry. Where have you been? Well, we had such a time. Let I've... me. Um, sorry about that. Sorry. Sorry, I should. Only it's the Latin blood in me. Huh? I kiss anything that moves. <laughs> anything of yours that moves, obviously. <laughs> Where's Muriel and Kevin? Well, they've, uh, they've sent their apologies. They're not going to be able to make it. Only Kev Kevin's got a gathering. 
A gathering of the clans? No, on his nose. <laughs> the menu, sir. Oh, thank you. Could you, um, uh, sorry, sorry, would you put it on the, uh, on the table? Thank you very much. <laughs> Jennifer, you promise you won't laugh at what I'm going to show you under the table. <laughs> Look. No. Please look. <laughs> oh, my God, you're on the run from the police. No, 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 no. No, no, it's just so that... So glamorous, it's so exciting. <laughs> well, I'm a little bit more mysterious than I look. <laughs> oh, if only we were handcuffed to each other, we could escape across the moors together. Wasn't that the 39 steps? Well, it has been done, I know. <laughs> no, you see... PC 49, these are toy ones. Well, very well made. Take them off. Well, I can't. That's the whole point. You know, the instructions are inside the box and Mother swallowed the key. My brother had some of no, these. You really? don't need a key. There it is. There. Ah! Oh. <laughs> and with one bound, he was free. <laughs> you wind this, sir. Thank you very much. You know, it's... It's strange, really. I mean, Mother put me in these handcuffs and you have released me from them. It's sort of almost symbolic, really. <laughs> Tonight, we're going to paint the town. Red or white, sir? Well, red, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Who ever heard of painting the town white? <laughs> the man's an idiot. Oh, sorry, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. You know, I've just been working it out. It's uh, just 32 days since we started um, stepping out. And already, here we are. Laughing at the same things. <laughs> I was laughing at you. What? <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, of course, so was I. So was I. You know. I mean, I can uh, laugh at myself. You know, I think it's very, very important in this day and age to be able to do that. Oh, sorry. And um, uh, <laughs> tell me, could um, could could Sandy, you know, make you laugh? Sandy. Sandy. You know, Sandy. Is it Sandy? Sandy, who you used to uh, co thing with. Oh, Sandy. Yes. No, Sandy didn't really make me laugh. Ha uh ha. -huh. <laughs> <laughs> I think I might be sufficient in that department. He was all right with Sandy. Oh? Sorry. In, sorry, in what way, you mean? Well, in every way. He was. <laughs> he was fantastic in. What? In the sack, you know. Sack. But uh, sack. Um, well, I mean, you know, you said fantastic. <laughs> you know, I mean, you mean fantastic? I mean, huh? Oh. What he was? He was fantastic. Um, <laughs> fantastic. Um, <laughs> what in bed? You mean? No, I was going to say fantastic in a nutshell. Oh, in a nutshell. Oh, that's all right. <laughs> oh, fantastic in a nutshell. Oh, yes. Physically, he was the type I go for. Big, brawny, rough. Well, I think I better be going. It's way past my bedtime. <laughs> Wait, could I have the bill? Please? Must you go? Well, um, my mother does tend to bolt the doors at midnight. Fortunately, since I'm not six foot three, I can climb through a small larder window. <laughs> I slipped the other day, got my head stuck in the brawn. <laughs> That's as near as I'll ever get to being brawny. <laughs> However, of course, there is always the path of celibacy, you know which is like saving the best cream cake till last, then somebody else gobbles it up. <laughs> <laughs> but I shall never... Uh, I shall never forget you, Jennifer. Sit down. What? Sit down. Is he here? Sorry, who? Sandy. Where? Is he? Well, I didn't know, is he? No, he isn't. He's gone. It's just you and me now. I suppose it is, really. Yes. I mean, we're both available, really, aren't we? I mean, you, you've never been married? I nearly was once. Oh? I left someone standing at the altar. There I was, in the car, in my wedding dress, my dad sitting beside me, trying to decide what to do with his top hat. And I suddenly said, let's skip the wedding, Dad, let's go to the zoo. Good. Uh, <laughs> so you mean you went to the zoo in a wedding dress? <laughs> we saw Chi-Chi and Anna. Oh, goodness me. Well, what, what about the bridegroom? What? He took the best man to Torre Molinas. They had a whale of a time. They sent me a card. <laughs> <laughs> Don't listen to me. Oh, dear. 
tales I could tell you. <laughs> About me and women, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, shudder to think. Mad cat scrapes, you know. Escapades. Irate husbands. <laughs> you know, I don't know if I dare. I, you know, I, I remember once the husband of this lady, I was a very, very pleasant lady. I was, um, seeing, and, uh, anyway. <laughs> this husband left behind, you know, a do-it-yourself wardrobe kit. Mm -hmm. By the time he'd rushed up the stairs, I had to build it so I could hide in it. <laughs> I saw that in an Alan Aikborn play at the National Theatre. Oh, you didn't? <laughs> we must have been in the same coach. <laughs> you are a liar! I know, I know! <laughs> I learned it from my mother. <laughs> oh, dear. Your mother came round to see me today. What? She accused me of having you in the house for a dirty weekend. She didn't. Goodness me, that's unthinkable. I don't mean the dirty weekend is unthinkable. I mean, that's, that's very thinkable. But, uh, but... Gabby has got nothing to do with her. Well, she thinks it has. She interrogated me on my doorstep. Bah, well, she'll have to apologise for this. I mean, I'm usually the one that has to say sorry, but she's going to do it this time. Come on, we're going home. What, this minute? Yes, this minute. I can be impulsive, I can be self-assertive. Waiter, the bill. There is just one thing. What? How are you on larder windows? <laughs> Why are we going so fast? Well, I want to get home while my dander's still up. My goodness, has come. What class? My skip. It's a sign, Jennifer. You see, I'm clearing out all my old life, and I'm going to put all in the skip room, fall right to the top. It's full already. What? Oh. Oh. Look at this. Father's bed. He's just gone to Australia, so he's chucking out all his things. His hat. That used to hang on the hook, you know. The hook! <laughs> Look at this. His medal. 25 years in sewage. The rhubarb. His rhubarb. Oh, I shall kill her. I shall kill her. Wait for me. <laughs> Timothy, come out of the larder. <laughs> and mind the cat. He's taken to sleeping <laughs> right away. <laughs> Mother, I have got several bones to pick with you. Oh, who's this? How dare you? Bring somebody home when I'm covered in cold cream. <laughs> How nice to see you so early in the morning. Mother, as you very well know, this is Jennifer. Oh, Jennifer! Oh, you look so much older in this light. <laughs> you have to apologise to Jennifer. I will not have you spying on her suggesting nasty things. She's a very nice girl. You've got some of my new trifle on your nose. This is no time for trifles. <laughs> you are pretending my fiancé. I am not your fiancé. Well, I should hope not. Well, you know what I mean. No, I don't. You've never asked me to marry you or anything remotely like it. We don't quarrel in this house, thank you. All right, will you marry me? Yes, I will. Right. So you have definitely <laughs> offended my fiancé. Now, do you want... Did you... Did you say yes? Yes, I did. <laughs> did you hear that? I am engaged! Hey! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs>
sandwich vicar. It was very beautiful. The funeral, I mean, not the sandwich. <laughs> Thank you. Your mother will be sorely missed. She will, she will. It's been a great shock to all of us, really. I mean, I never thought she was going to die. She had tickets for Charlie Girl next week. <laughs> Who knows the time of our comings in and goings out? Yes, she knows mine. New, new. <laughs> so difficult to think of it in the past. Eh? Sandwich, Mrs. Bradley. They're all very nice. No, it's so difficult to think of Mother in the past, just to, you know, believe that she's gone forever. I feel, uh... How do you feel? Numb, Vicar, numb. You'll feel worse later. Oh, that is a comfort. <laughs> Kevin, sausage or hepto, too good. I thought that his address was a bit over the top. What? Well, I mean, your mother wasn't a saint, not by any stretch of the imagination. Excuse me, Kevin, my mother was a saint. Listen, and when you finish scoffing these sausage rolls, which, incidentally, mother made before she died... <laughs> oh, Mrs. Barrow, well, you know the truth. You know what a wonderful woman mother was, don't you? Yes. Yes, of course you do. She was a very good friend of yours, and you were a very good friend of hers. Incidentally, I know that she wanted you to have the hall stand. No, not now, not yet. <laughs> that bit about her doing good by stealth. I mean, putting pork pies through letterboxes, never telling anyone. I mean, how do you know? Kevin, I want you to know that Mother wrote the vicar's speech herself. She wrote... She's dead! In anticipation to save me the trouble. I loved that last paragraph. How did she put it? What is a mother? A mother is... Love on legs. <laughs> she used to knock you around. Kevin, I want you to know that I cherish every slap. They made me the man I am. No comment. Oh, I'm sorry about this, Dick, but the truth is that my sister married beneath her. My mother always said his eyes were too close together. <laughs> and of course she was right. But then she, she was right about so many things, you see. I couldn't. <laughs> Mrs. Barrymore, another sherry. I know Mother would want you to have the best. Oh, I've already had one. Oh, she wouldn't want you to have two, no. <laughs> <laughs> Who were those two women at the back of the church, heavily veiled? Um, I think there were two um, Arab ladies, you know, who'd come in to shelter from the rain. <laughs> it was a little sparsely attended. I didn't see your father. No, he's down under. Oh, under the sod, at peace. No, no, in Australia, holiday. <laughs> With Uncle Claude. <laughs> I tried to get them on the phone, but I think they've gone walkabout. I'm explaining to the vicar, Mrs. Barrowell, that I tried to get my father uh, on the phone, but he's gone walkabout. I'm explaining. I did explain to him. Yes, I, I tried to get hold of him, but I think... Uh, well, I know, in fact, he is uh, pushing Uncle Claude across the Nullarbor plane in his wheelchair. Where's your dear sister? Well, Muriel's up on some feminist pony trek in the Black Mountains. I've left messages, but... Poor husband and daughter. How they'll both be desolate. Now, why didn't Jennifer come? Sorry, who? Jennifer, your fiancé? Oh, no, she's looking after her mother. Some town. Some town with a W in it. If one may ask, where did the unfortunate occurrence take place? Uh, the engagement took place here. It just burst <laughs> out of my no, no, no. The sad demise of your dear mother. Oh, the sad demise. Yes. Well, she shuffled off this mortal coil at the Lido. The Lido? A water skiing accident? Worse than that. She had folded all her clothes very neatly in a little pile by the shore. Terribly neat. Well, she would be always be neat and tidy because of everything. And then it appears that she simply walked into the water. They never found her, you know. Not a sausage. <laughs> well, there's a pound of sausages, but of course she'd be <laughs> to before. I mean, it's such a tragedy. I mean, it's not unlike the uh, MP, you know, Reginald Perry. <laughs> Your mother gave no indication that she intended to uh, take her own life? No, uh, no, she'd made the sausage rolls, of course. But then she'd made sausage rolls before without actually drowning herself. You know. <laughs> it's all my fault. I should have guessed what she had in mind when she borrowed my Davitoff to take the spots off Timothy's black tie. That smell. A week last Thursday. Good heavens, Mother, what's that smell? You've not been chlorinating the goldfish again, have you? <laughs> Try not to be silly. It's the smell of Davitoff. Davitoff? I thought he was a Russian chess player. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that joke, it catches your throat, doesn't it? 
Mm, that's a nasty chesty cough. Nasty chesty cough? Is he the one that beat David off? <laughs> Schoolboy well. humour. Jennifer will soon get tired of that. Jennifer likes my jokes, Mother, I'm afraid. <laughs> Which is why we're getting married, of course. <laughs> How can we married? Don't you count your chickens until they're hatched. She might stand you up at the altar. Oh. Look at Mimsy Tremlett. Drove round and round that church till they ran out of petrol. <laughs> and what was the bridegroom doing? Bombing the roar, if you please. <laughs> well, he could hardly bail out, Mother, to get married, could he? <laughs> well, he bailed out to get into that prison camp fast enough. <laughs> Mimsy was inconsolable. Father says she consoled herself very nicely with the 1st Battalion of the Pioneer Corps. <laughs> well, not all of them. Well, practically all of them. All except the Padre. <laughs> Even he was weakening. <laughs> Mother, talking about the Second World War and suffering in general, are we going to have any lunch there at all? I've got more important things to do than slave over your lunch. Now, cut the pack. What? If you want lunch, cut the pack. <gasps> Can't eat these, Mother, can I? Don't be silly. They're tarot cards. Mrs. Barrable taught me. Uh, Mrs. Barrable? She has powers, Timothy. Oh. She can read tea bags. <laughs> she can contact the dead. <laughs> she couldn't get through to direct inquiries the other day. <laughs> oh, that's different. Now, these are your recent past. Right. Ah. The Wheel of Fortune. What does that mean, then? You haven't changed your underwear. <laughs> yes, I have. Well, the tarot does not lie. Well, no, I haven't. Quite right, quite right. I couldn't. The cat was in the airing cupboard. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Now, the ruined tower. Yes. You've broken something. No. Well, not unless you count that cup. Oh, so it was you. Of course I'd count it. <laughs> now, we'll do mine. Right. Ah. Death. That's the fourth time today, Timothy. The death card, four times. I want you to put sticker soles on your black shoes. Why is that, Mother? Well, it always rains at funerals. Oh. Oh. Mother, honestly, thank goodness, you are not going to die. I'll do the cards for you. Just watch this. Aha, uh -huh, the sun, Cupid, the Pope. I think you're going to have a lovely holiday in the sunshine and fall madly in love with the charming Polish gentleman. <laughs> you mustn't let Mrs. Barrable worry you much. Good heavens! What are all those sausage rolls for, Mother? Feeding the 5,000? <laughs> oh, have you got Russell Grant coming round for tea? <laughs> Wait. These are for guests. Guests? Timothy. Yes. If and when I die... Oh, not again, Mother, please. Yes. If Jesus does finally require me for a sunbeam... <laughs> what do you think you'll do? After I've cleared up the empty champagne bottles, you mean? Or... <laughs> Try to be serious. Uh, well, I should bring Muriel, of course. Muriel? Over my dead body. <laughs> well, it would be over your dead body, wouldn't it? <laughs> when everything's divided, yes. Muriel is not to have this egg whisk. She <laughs> ruined it when she tried to clean it. <laughs> well, we'd arrange to have it buried with you, Mother. You know. <laughs> I'm sure there are eggs on the other side. Or, well, of course, we could perhaps just place it in the pyramid. You know. What are you going to have, Mother, by the way? An army of life-sized terracotta warriors, or are you just going to mummify the cat, you know? All I want is to be sure you'll look after your father. Oh, I will, Mother. Promise? I promise. Good boy. Very good boy. Here. Oh. Of course. It means you won't be able to get married, but you understood that. What? Well, you can't get married and look after your father. It's impossible. Look at me. I was never able to get married. You, you are married, Mother. You're married to Father. In name only. <laughs> anyway, you promise. So that's that, as far as your marriage is concerned. Oh, don't be silly, Mother. You're not going to die anyway. I might just pop off. Pop off? 
Is he the one that beat Davitoff and Chester? <laughs> in the playoff? I suppose you realize who inherits my entire estate. Father? Oh, no. I'm leaving everything to you. Every penny. Well, what about Muriel? Well, there is one condition. That you don't get married for 30 years. <laughs> 30 years, Mother? I'll be 75. You will keep this kitchen just as it is, won't you? I want it as a monument to me. Yes, certainly. Tell me, Mother, where will we place the tomb of the unknown cockroach? Where will we... <laughs> How you take me for granted. There. What's this, Mother? The first LP. <laughs> Tutankhamen's greatest hit. It's an Italian pizza. <laughs> Is it perhaps a section of the Leaning Tower of Pisa? <laughs> or is it that bit of oily tarmac that the Pope is always kissing? <laughs> it's the new goon style humour, is it? I wouldn't recognise it, but it seems overdone. Well, this certainly seems overdone, Mother. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to put this in my briefcase and take it out. What a good idea. Eat it in the park. Al fresco. No, not eat it, Mother. Throw it. It's the Northern Area Frisbee Championships. <laughs> This is the place, Kevin. That's the stone there, you see. That stone. On that stone, pile of mother's bone. All neatly piled, all folded up, you know. No creases, all nicely. And did you leave a note? Just a short one. Hell, see how many pages is that? Only thirteen. <laughs> says in here that I drove her to that. Well, what do all the other pages say? Well, basically the same, really. <laughs> See at the end here? See? Yep. Farewell, Timothy. Don't forget you promised me not to get married if this happened. There it is, in black and white. I promised. There's no one to hold you to it. So confused. I'm not that confused. You arranged the service and everything. No, oh, Mother did that beforehand. She even tipped the vicar. <laughs> She's a very wonderful woman, Kevin. There's something wrong about all this. Can't get married now, you know. Might as well be a nun. Don't you mean a monk? If you're not doing anything, it doesn't matter much, does it? <laughs> Mother's last wish. That Muriel should not have this. Oh? Yes. Now, you've got a longer arm than me, Kevin. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to throw it in the water. Timothy, it's been a strain on Kevin, please, wider. please. Throw it in the water. But Tim Muriel might find it. Throw, a... Kevin! There. All done. <laughs> Hear a splash. Ah, well, well, this arm came up out of the water and caught it. <laughs> Please throw it. All right. It's better. Have you uh, found the will? I know what's in it. Oh. Your mother came over to see me last week. What? You? Why should she? I mean, what have you got to say to you? I mean, I'm a son. All right, all right. Don't be jealous. I'm not jealous. Not jealous at all. <laughs> not interested. Why? Right, what did she say, then? <laughs> don't know what, wrong with what I'm doing. I'm trying to fix this bloody blocked sink. No swearing in this house, please, Kevin. It's my house. All the more reason. <laughs> so little Miss Perfect has got a blocked sink, has she? <laughs> Well, perhaps you should spend more time in her kitchen and less in mine. Oh, silver fish powder. Oh, no smoke without fire. <laughs> Aren't I going to get a cup of coffee? I don't know, are you? I see. Oh, it's in the cupboard. H A G. Got your name on. <laughs> Kevin, I went to the doctor this morning. What's the matter with you? Well, you wouldn't have heard of it. I wrote it down. It's got six syllables. He said you could die of the first three, let alone the first. <laughs> well, you look perfectly well. 
Well, that's one of the symptoms, that and feeling perfectly healthy. Oh, do stop fiddling with that you bend. It reminds me of my complaint. You've not got a Brillo pad stuck inside you as well, have you? <laughs> oh, well. I won't tell you that I'm leaving all my money to you and Muriel. What? You heard. You... Well, well, what about Timothy and, and father-in-law? What about them? Well, it's your money, of course, to do as you like with, but, uh, well, how can I put it? Well, you're not actually very fond of us, are you? <laughs> that shows how little you understand people. You know how certain persons are always saying your eyes are too close together? Well, only one person. Well, I don't say it. In fact, if your eyes were any further apart, they'd be round the side of your face like a chicken. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be very silly. Oh, there we are. Well, thank you. If if you do think of me when I'm gone, Kevin, I would like you to think of me as the person who gave you back your self-esteem. Stop. Mm. Goodbye, then. You're not that ill, really, are you? I'm just popping off. Ooh. <laughs> Many a true word. <laughs> oh, dear Kevin. When I'm gone, look after Timothy. Keep him away from women. He only annoys them. <laughs> I'll see my own way out. One way or another. <laughs> this used to be father's job, of course. Then he went to Australia. Mother took it over. And now it's fallen to me. Why don't you get out of those clothes? What? No, on the hearth rug, Jennifer, please. <laughs> Mother would turn in a grave, if she had one. I don't mean that. I mean, put some other ones on. Life goes on, Tim. Well, does it? You know, one wonders, does it? I mean, I just see Mother everywhere in here, you know. I mean, for example, that antimacassar, if that was out of place, she'd want to tidy it all up. Had it all neat like that. Just, excuse me a minute. Sorry. <laughs> you know, I want everything just as Mother wanted it. That's very nice, Tim. Oh, the registrar gave me a date today. What? What do you mean? You got a date with some registrar? What do you mean, sorry? <laughs> he gave me a date for our wedding. Oh, the wedding. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. It just... It seems so... so far away now, you know. Well, it isn't that far. The 27th of next month. 27th? That's Mother's birthday. Oh, oh, well, how about the second, the week after? Second, second. Well, that's the cat's birthday. <laughs> you celebrate the cat's birthday? Well, you know, we just push the boat out a bit, you know. We just have a, a candle in a tin of cat meat, that's all. <laughs> Would you rather put the whole thing off for a bit? Well, I was wondering, you know, if we should perhaps call it off completely, really. Timothy, what are you saying? Well, I mean, I don't want to compromise you in any way. You can't compromise me we're engaged oh yes the ring um that does sort of belong to mother you see i bought it on her access card <laughs> so it's you know part of the estate but it isn't mine uh, well it's just that oh, it's a bit stiff isn't it um it's a question of probate you see i mean the fellows will be coming around with the tape measures i mean they may make me a ward of court you know I mean, it's, you know, it's absolutely out of my hands. I'm powerless. Look, you're very, very upset. Sit down. Yes, well, oh, not there. That's Mother's chair. Mother's she doesn't chair. need it anymore. She's gone. She's not gone. You know, she's here, everywhere. You know, like Versailles and Louis XIV. The Borley Rectory, you know. And the, well, the Reverend Borley, whoever he is. I mean, the thing is, I promised, you see. What did you promise? Well, I promised Mother that I would look after Father if she died. And she's kept her side of the bargain. <laughs> she's died, you know. We'll look after him. I like your father. He can live with us. I can't get married till I'm 75. <laughs> Why not? Are you on probation or what? <laughs> Let's go to my place. My house is nicer. It's not haunted for a start. Haunted? Well, you say your mother's everywhere. <laughs> What was that? <laughs> Probably your blessed cat knocked over your mother's broomstick, no doubt. <laughs> Come on, Tim. You're not a child. Aren't I? You're head of the family now. It's you who winds the clock. Good, good I am. I mean, I could override the central heating if I want. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody would stop me. You can do anything you please. <laughs> Absolutely right, yes, sir. Now, what are you going to have? Gin, scotch, whiskey? Oh, 
We've only got British sherry. <laughs> Let's go to my place. You get yourself changed, and I'll go on ahead and put the baked potatoes in the oven. All right. Baked potatoes, lovely. We'll have fun on the hearth rug, toasting crumpets. We'll break all the rules. We'll have after eight minutes at half past seven. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, dear. That, let me get the door. There we are. Oh, steady. <laughs> there Bye. We are. <laughs> Life in the old dog yet. Get the toasting fork if they could see me now. That could take a... <laughs> Dead? Yes. She can't be. Well, she did away with herself. She what? At the leader. She left a note. Left her clothes, walked into the water. They never found her. We had a memorial service. <laughs> now, Muriel, don't get hysterical. You, you've had a memorial service, you say? Just a simple affair. With a few simple people? Tim and me. <laughs> well, I think I'll put up a monument. Be expensive. Just a few words to Kevin and Timothy, my husband and my brother. Wallies! Well, Muriel, you're upset. You're saying things you'll regret later on. You prize Nana! She's not dead! This is all because Timothy is getting married. Don't you know my mother by now? She's staying somewhere with some friend of hers. You can't wish it away, Muriel. Face facts. What facts? Her ashes have come. Oh, really? This I must say. <laughs> What are you, what are you doing? Look, a battery. She must have had a pacemaker. <laughs> Not with an HP 11. <laughs> oh, and look what we have here. A hinge. Now, what do you suppose she used this for? A hip replacement? <laughs> These are from the bonfire, you buffoon. You said there was no body. How can there be ashes? <laughs> And she said she was going to leave all her money to us. She says that to the window cleaner. That's how she never pays him. And she <laughs> said my eyes weren't too close together at all. Well, they can't be, can they? Because you can't see what's right in front of your nose, can you? She's still alive. I'll kill her. <laughs> I'll kill her! Now that's my boy. And you were just sort of sitting there, Mrs. Marable. Well, it's what I expected ever since... I know my imagination's been working overtime. I mean, I'm, I'm overwrought. It's a visitation. You know, I just think about it all the time and it worries me and it gets... It's a what? Your mother wants to talk to you from the other side. The other side? What, the other side of the sofa, do you mean? Or what, Miss Marshall? <laughs> Don't mock the spirit world. Your mother's restless. We must make contact. I've got to make contact with Jennifer. That's who I've got to make contact yes, with. Yes, well, we're not concerned with the gross physical plane. Well, I am. The grosser, the better, to be honest. <laughs> now, where are you off to now, Mrs. Barrable? To make it more conducive. Now, put your hands on the table. That's it. Oh, it's your mother. She's so anxious to communicate, she's banging to get in. Now, that's the postman. <laughs> he always knocks twice. <coughs> no, it's not, it's not. Oh, come and sit down. <laughs> All right, I will. Are you there, Phyllis Lumsden? If you are there, Phyllis, speak through me. Oh. <laughs> you all right, Mrs. Barrable? Do you want some Lugazine or some bicarbonate? <laughs> Be quiet. You'll get my hairbrush. That's the sort of thing my mother says. Said, said. Oh, stop jiggering and listen to me. I'm not jiggering. Timothy, be polite to Mrs. Barrable. She's my friend. You did a terrible thing this afternoon, Timothy. Is that you, Mother? You've been wicked. No, I haven't. You're planning to see that Jennifer person. You promised... No, I didn't promise. I promised not to get married. I didn't promise not to cohabit a bit and toast crumpets and things. <laughs> How dare you convert with that Jezebel? And me, barely cold. Life goes on. Not for you, it doesn't. <laughs> Timothy? 
Sign that. Oh. <laughs> I promise never to see Jennifer again for any purpose. Sign it. You'll get nothing but restless nights until you do. But I love her, Mrs. Barrible. Goodness me. It's, it's, an, it's another one. It's Great Uncle Bastable. <laughs> it's probably a family reunion. <laughs> It's unclean spirits. Right, oh, mother. I... Wait a minute, Mrs. Barrow. Your lips didn't move. <laughs> I don't want that mural in my house. Sign the paper. Muriel, you're not dead, are you? Oh, I'm out here. Would you let me in? Oh, oh gosh. Wait a minute. Oh, oh I'm sorry. I didn't. Re... What are you doing in the dark? We're having a seance. <sighs> We got through to Mother there. Honestly, could hear her voice so clearly. Really. You know, she could have been in the next room. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing in my kitchen, Muriel? <laughs> Mother. Do you see it, Muriel? It? Who's it? The cat's mother? <laughs> mother, you're not dead. Who said I was? You did. You've made me look very foolish. You are very foolish. You <laughs> and Kevin. And what about Mrs. Barrable? Oh, I was part of it. Oh, you prize Wally. Muriel, I am the oldest. You old prize Wally. <laughs> Fancy falling for something so transparent. And you were very quick to arrange the funeral, I noticed. You organised that, Mother. What a wretched turnout. There are only five, and one of them the vicar. Six, Mother. I was number six. <laughs> that was me at the back in a veil. <laughs> the bus made me late. Well, since you're not dead, you'll be wanting this back, I suppose. The one thing I said, don't give to me or you give it straight to her. I did not, Mother. Kevin threw it. Incidentally, where have you been all this time? In the cupboard under the stairs. I think I'll go back if this is the reception I get. Well, I'm very pleased to see you, Mother, because it means I can finally get married. No, you can't. You signed the paper. No, I didn't. Dulcie, I'll never speak to you again. Oh, oh hello, everyone. Oh. My... Oh! <laughs> Atheist be jiggered, she's a Catholic. <laughs> I thought you were dead. Isn't it wonderful? Means we can finally get married. Oh, I don't feel well. Oh, Mother, not again, please. By the way, this coming back from the dead has been done before. Don't be blasphemous. Only Bobby Ewing did it with rather more style. <laughs> Muriel, I'm leaving all my money to the vicar. She said she was leaving it all to me. After all I've done. <laughs> what is it? Oh, don't be silly. I know it's a long distance from Australia. <laughs> Hello, dear. Yes, it's me. No, I'm not dead. <laughs> no, that was just a joke. Hello? <laughs> Hello? Oh, Claude, where's my husband? Fainted? <laughs> He's been drinking. There it goes. Other side. Hmm. So now there's nothing at all to stop us getting married? Absolutely nothing. What's that? Probably mother. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
This could be it. It's a jumbo. This could be farther all the way home from Australia. <laughs> Aeroflot. <laughs> or perhaps he's chosen to come the pretty way. <laughs> this takes me back. I used to collect aeroplane numbers. You know, just sort of out of interest. Mm. Yes, it's a bit like collecting train numbers, really, only, you know, more middle class. Why did we have to run away and hide from your mother? Well, you can't be seen with her in public places. I mean, she's impossible. I mean, the last thing I want to happen is father arrive and catch mother giving me a lick wash. I feel a bit mean about giving her the slip. Oh, you mustn't, you mustn't. <laughs> I'm always hiding from her. <laughs> when we get married, we'll be doing it all the time. Mr. Habibullah, a transit passenger en route for Reykjavik, please come to the information desk. Now, if you can tell Miss, me... Miss, I want to report a lost child. If you could just... Wait for <laughs> a lost child. Excuse me. His name's Timothy. He has no distinguishing marks except a small scar on the side of his nose. He fell over one of the guy ropes at that Skylon thing. The what? The Skylon. Will you remember the Festival of Britain? He got lost there, too. <laughs> Festival of Britain? How old is this child? Forty-five years and three months. <laughs> but I have to look after him, of course. Oh, I see. He's, um, simple, is he? <laughs> simple? <laughs> what do you mean, simple? Did you hear what this chit of a girl said? She called my son simple. Let me tell you, madam. Timothy could name all seven dwarfs before he was four. <laughs> How old are you? Twenty-eight. Now, I don't suppose you can name all seven dwarfs even now. <clears throat> there you are, then. So don't call my family simple. <laughs> Will Timothy please come to the information desk? Always yes. insist on the best service and you'll get it. <laughs> Have you come far? <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> Timothy will leave a wash when he arrives. Oh, excuse me. My family were meant to be meeting me here. These gentlemen are before you. Oh, fair enough. Sydney! Oh, here is! <laughs> oh, Father, you're back already. Oh, you're here. And Mother's here. And Jennifer's here. And we're getting married. Oh, I am happy. Happy. Happy, grumpy, sneezy, dopey, bashful, <laughs> dumpy, cozy. There you are, girlie. <laughs> Koala with a flag. <laughs> Just what I've always wanted. Thank you. It's made out of kangaroo skin. I, I was a bit worried because I know you're a vegetarian. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's not going to eat it, Father. <laughs> and this is the little grandson's birthday. Guess what this is? Oh, I can't think. <laughs> <laughs> Many happy returns. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> Many happy returns. <laughs> Hey, as for you two, now you're tying the knot, setting up home together. Yes, indeed. Do you know who this is? Uh... <laughs> Ned Kelly's underpants. <laughs> oh, thank you for starting the presents without me. Do go on. Oh, right you. <laughs> it's an Australian salad whirler. You, you twist it round like that, you see. You put the uh, lettuce in after you've washed it, yes. give it a whirl, the water flies out, and then... Uh, there you are, the salad's as dry as a wallaby's whatnot. <laughs> Sydney, don't show off in front of Jennifer. <laughs> I think it's lovely, don't you, Di? No, it isn't. Oh, he's talking to Jennifer, not you. Oh, I'm the cat's mother, then. God help the cat. <laughs> <laughs> You're probably the only couple in the Northern Hemisphere who've got one of those. Uh, you can get them for £2.23 at Bewsley's. <laughs> You can get them anywhere. Oh, Muriel. Now I know why you weren't at the airport. You've been descaling the kettle. <laughs> this tea will taste dreadful. She was the warm-up man from the Spanish Inquisition. <laughs> she is the master of the well-turned praise. Be quiet. Do you hear that? Be quiet. Very quick. Very clever. Yes, well, if we're going to have tea, I'll get the milk, shall I? Right. Oh, thank you, Jennifer. Get that case off my table. No, you haven't had your present yet. If it's a boomerang, don't bother. No, no, no. No, no, for you, my dear, the very best Australia can offer. Oh. Semi-precious stones. 
Semi-precious stones are for people who live in semi-detached houses. <laughs> well, I live in a semi, I'll have them, they're opals. They're mine. <laughs> We don't have the milk bottles on the table in this house, thank you, dear. Sorry? I'll say my own stories, Timothy. Sorry, sorry. You don't have to speak for me. Well, I only meant... We know. don't quarrel in this house, Jennifer, especially in the kitchen. Mother, what are you talking about? I've had four black eyes in this room. <laughs> One from the ironing board and three from you. Yes, well, I've got quite a lot to do, so I think I'd better go. I'll drop you home. Oh, is everybody going? We'll see you tomorrow. Yes. Jennifer, not over the chocolate fingers. <laughs> Good heavens, Mother. Jennifer and I are getting married the day after tomorrow. That's as may be. That's as will be, Mother. You know, I have to put it in the strongest possible terms. Jennifer is my wife-to-be. Fiddlesticks. Not fiddlesticks at all. Isaiah 2, 26. And in his season, a man shall leave his mother and cleave to his wife. I've got a lot of cleaving to do. Oh, four letters now, big boy talk. Well, I can still make your bottom smart and don't you forget it. Make it smart? What do you think would suit it, Mother? <laughs> nice bow tie and a pink carnation, perhaps? <laughs> Cheek. Cheek, yes, both cheeks, indeed, yes. Yes, we'll have two pink carnations. Timmy, speak to him. Uh, congratulations, Timmy. <laughs> You're so wet. Go back to Australia and irrigate it. Mother, how can you say that? Father has lugged these presents halfway around the world. Yes, and given himself a hernia, no doubt. As if I haven't got enough on my plate. Oh, a hernia on a plate. Is that today's new menu? <laughs> Take your glasses off. Why? Because I'm going to slap you, that's Goodness why. Goodness me, come to some sense. I'm no longer the little boy you used to slap. You know, I'm engaged to be married. I'm a fully grown adult. Admit it. Admit defeat. Never. <laughs> but I was going to wear these at my wedding. That does it. I'm going to pack. Get my knickknacks together. Language, Timothy. Father, I'm about to be a rate pair. I don't think I need to take your advice. Well, uh, don't trip over my didgeridoo. Ah, <laughs> oh, here he is in his favourite chair. The poor man's Walter Gabriel. <laughs> no, uh, uh. Oh, I was dreaming. I thought I was back on that bloody aeroplane. <laughs> what were you doing on the aeroplane, Father? I was asleep, I think. <laughs> what are you doing with that school photograph? Oh, well, I've just had it reframed, you know. I've got to take something to my marriage. Jennifer's got some lovely paintings, and this is all I've got. You know? But uh, you're not in that picture, are you? No, but I tried. <laughs> you know, I'm jumping up and down the back row there. You see? You see just the top of her head there? You see that? That's me there. <laughs> There's Jennifer in the front row. Oh, lovely girl. Trim ankles, both of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what she sees in you. I thought I was more her type. Oh, <laughs> Father, you're not entertaining lecherous thoughts, I hope? No, they're entertaining me. <laughs> <laughs> you lucky old son of a gun. Well, I suppose it's beginner's luck, really, you know. It's a very humbling thing, the love of a good woman, isn't it? Is it? I wouldn't know. <laughs> Yes, I'm perfectly ready to settle down as a pipe and slippers man, you know, having sown my wild oats. Well, say, say sown my wild oats. I've read the packet. You know. <laughs> Father. Father. Uh, not more food. Uh, oh, I thought you were an air hostess. <laughs> uh, trim little things waggling down the aisle with the duty free. <laughs> if my imagination counts for anything, I. I'm in the Mile High Club, I can tell you. <laughs> Are you flying anywhere on your honeymoon? Yes, down the motorway to Eastbourne. <laughs> the Hard Shoulder Club. <laughs> <coughs> while, we're, uh, <coughs> while we're on the subject of human sexuality, I, um, <laughs> I, uh, I was, um, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> I, um, <coughs> was just... There's one, sort of, you know, little point that I haven't quite straightened out yet. And I've been, um, <laughs> I've been, um, I've been looking in the books in the library and, uh, <laughs> curious enough, it's not in any of them. In, uh, uh, not even, would you believe, in the, um, in the books behind the curtains at the back. And, uh, it's just... <laughs> Well, it is, you know, after all. 
flesh and blood, and one has these feelings, and not to put too fine a point on it, one... <laughs> wop, wop. <laughs> Father, for goodness sake! Oh. oh, look, he's jet-lagged. He jet-lagged on a bus move. Sit down. Do you want a little drink at all? No, thank you, Share mine, then, yes. Now, listen. Ah. What I've been it? having a little talk with Jennifer. Yes. Now, I want you to regard this, by the way, not as much as losing a brother as gaining a sister. Yes. Now, yes. listen. <clears throat> I don't want you to worry if, as the time gets nearer, doubts begin to appear. Oh, no, no. Oh, no, the doubts are all behind me now, you know. I'm now a born-again bridegroom. <laughs> I'm not meaning your doubts so much. Timothy, oh. it's your mother. Oh. Tell her I'm not here. She says you are. <laughs> oh, to be married. <laughs> Roll on, Jennifer. I mean, in the nicest possible way. <laughs> oh, sorry. Uh, what were you saying, Timothy? I'm Muriel. What? Are you sure? Yes. Oh, fair enough. You know, this wedding thing of Timothy's, I, I've got my doubts. Why must I? Must, must, must. All you do... Well, we've must. all got doubts. But it'll be all right. Oh. You'll be all right. You'll have Mother all to yourself. Oh, I suppose I will. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Picture of you. Oh, uh, you're whistling in the dark. What? Trying to keep your spirits up. Reassure yourself. <laughs> I am not. Oh, yes, you are. You were always singing in the dentist's waiting room. <laughs> You've got doubts. Mother, I want to assure you that I have absolutely no doubts whatsoever about my marriage. Aha, uh -huh. caught you. I never mentioned marriage. Let me see your tongue. Come on. Look at your own mother, it's nearer. <laughs> I'll give you castor oil. Oh. <laughs> I knew it. Looks like a piece of last week's tripe. <laughs> You're constipated. <laughs> this marriage business is blocking you up. <laughs> it's not, mother. Quite the reverse, to be honest. I knew it. You're loose. <laughs> That means you have serious doubts. I have no doubts at all, Mother. Honestly. Oh, yes, you have. Well, a few. A few uh -huh, I thought so. Finish the potatoes. Well, everybody has a few, don't they? I mean, even Muriel, you know, had doubts before she married Kevin. Oh, Kevin. There's Kevin for you. A great useless lump with his eyes too close together. <laughs> <laughs> they were laughing and cuddling on Saturday, anyway. Putting Put it on a show. For the sake of the child. Child wasn't there, Mother. So, oh, yeah. oh what are you doing? Of course. Oh, your hands are shaking. The water's warm. <laughs> You're running a temperature. <laughs> I'm not, Mother. This is premarital tension. <laughs> You're not ready for marriage. You want to go back to the womb, you do. <laughs> Well, it's a very kind offer, Mother, but no thank you. <laughs> Timsy, mm -hmm. I know a place where you'll we'll be properly safe and warm. I'm not going into your bed with a bottle of that, would you mean? <laughs> the White Stag Hotel, Tewkesbury. Well? It's a British Rail bargain break. This weekend, you and I... All booked. Mother, I'm not going away with you this weekend. I'm getting married this weekend. Just until it all blows over. <laughs> blows over? I'm getting married, Mother. Going away for a honeymoon to Eastbourne. Happy ever after. That's the whole point. Oh, well. Just testing. <laughs> so, we'd better get on with the arrangements, then. What arrangements? Well, they don't want any. There's going to be no reception. It's going to be all very quiet. Thank you very much. I booked the Legion Hall. What for? I've invited 65 people. 65? Well, 66, if British Rail find Dulcie Barrable's teeth. <laughs> Mother, when all these guests arrive, you know, I shall turn my back on them, I shall ignore them. Oh. Oh, well. So shall I, then. What do you mean? Well, for the buffet. I was going to do mashed potatoes in pastry cases <laughs> and a peanut butter dip. But in to the bin it goes. All gone. Mother, I'm the person who throws the food in the bin. I mean, if these people all turn up, what are you going to give them? What are you going to give them? All 65 of them. It's your wedding. 
Mother, I never thought I'd hear myself say this, but will you please do the catering for my wedding? Why can't Miss Fancy Pants Jennifer do it? She feeds the birds every morning at 11 o'clock, halfway down the garden in a nightdress. Oh, you've been spying on her? No. Mrs. Broadbent has. <laughs> oh, Mother, why can't you get your harpies to stop staring, mind their own business, you know? All we want to be is alone. <laughs> you see yourself as Greta Gable, you do. <laughs> I don't even see myself as Clark Garble, Mother. <laughs> All we want is to be alone, Jennifer and I. And then what? Can she sew? Can she wash? Can she even cook like I can? Yes, she can. But she's promised not to. <laughs> <laughs> Big day for you tomorrow, then. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> Tell me, uh, Denzel, do you do takeaway food at all? The takeaway? Yes. Well, a scotch egg goes in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yes, all right, then. Could I have 66 scotch eggs? 66. Your inside's a bit loose. <laughs> No, for tomorrow, you know, for tomorrow. I could collect them all at lunchtime, you see. Now, look, I've got a bit of a list here. I've got the 66, of course, the Scotch eggs. 33 individual meat pies. They can share them. <laughs> 66 patty ploughmans. 33 fishermen's platters, I thought, for the vegetarians, you see, just in case. And 132 packets of pork scratchings. <laughs> Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, no, I'll make that, sorry, I've just thought, I'll make that 128, because the Jacobsons are Norwegian, but they might be Jewish as well. You see. Is this for your reception? Yeah, more or less. Well, I'm glad I'm not coming. <laughs> oh, dear, see if oh, Frank, the first stag on the stamping ground, lovely. What are you having, a pina colada? It's milk. <laughs> milk? Oh, yeah, I think I've got an ulcer. You can't drink milk on a stag night, Frank. Stag night? When? Tonight. <laughs> you know, this is it. It's just begun. <laughs> Strong drink will flow. Well, just me and you? No, no, no. Everybody's coming. I've sent the invitations out. You got your invitation? No. Well, I sent them all. I did the drawings, the funny drawings, you know. Me, you know, with the big glasses and the <laughs> check trousers. You know the ones? I got Mother to post. Oh, dear, no. So, it's just me and you, then, eh? Well, I'll have to phone people up, won't I? Oh, too late, Tim. They'll have all gone out by now. Well, look, we've got 12 bottles of champagne to get through. That's six each. <laughs> by gum, Frank, we can do it, sure we can, right? <laughs> I say, Denzel, will you bring on the shampoo? Let roistering commence. <laughs> we... Oh, here's Kevin. Good old Kevin. You got the invitation, then. What invitation? Oh, thank you, Mother. Dear me. <laughs> You're looking a bit sort of down, Kevin. Are you all right? You're Why right? did I have to marry your sister? If I'd been a monk, I could be shortlisted for Pope by now. <laughs> Kevin, Muriel couldn't have married a nicer guy. There you are. Well, she could have done, but, you know, none of them ever asked. <laughs> it's not cold. The fridge was full up but I've kept it away from the microwave, so at least your wedding tackle won't glow in the dark. <laughs> that is the wonderful thing about champagne, isn't it? That whatever else may go wrong, the champagne <coughs> always goes pop. <laughs> well, it usually does, you know, something. Uh, I think I'd better be getting home. The gerbil's on heat. I'll come and give you a hand. Oh, come on, come on. The gerbils, it's, it's not gerbil night, it's stag night. The last get-together of the stags. Locking antlers together, for goodness sake. I mean, stay here, have a glass of the warm south. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's all brown. Do you know that only one bottle in 25,000 goes that colour? Well, it's very nice to know, I suppose, that one is somehow special. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so it goes. Not with a bang, but a whimper. My stag night. Empty, no friends. <laughs> we... <laughs> All right, mate, you can laugh, you can laugh. Go back to your gerbils, go on, they need you more than I do. <laughs> oh, you twit. What? You've heard of surprise parties, haven't you? <laughs> 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 oh, oh, dear. 
Oh, my dear friends. I think I'm gonna cry. <laughs> We've been stood here an hour now, and we're still 27 minutes early. Look, Frank, you've seen these films and plays where they leave everything for the last minute, and there's a desperate chase at the end. Well, I don't want that to happen, you know, not today. Not today of all days. Well, look cheerful. You're getting married. I'm hungover, Frank. Look, so am I. <laughs> hey, aren't I supposed to have the ring? Oh, yes. Mother cleaned it with Brasso this morning. Your mother? <laughs> I should check it's still there. Oh, really? She wouldn't stoop that low. She has. <laughs> this is the last straw. Tim, we'll, we'll, we'll buy another one. Look, Tim, you can have mine. Oh, my God. Oh, my head. <laughs> Mother. Have you what, two feet? Oh. <laughs> Where's the mat? Where's the hall stand? Where's the thing thing? Where, where the chairs? Where the carpets? It's all over, Timothy. All over what? <laughs> everything. Our lives in this house. Well, where is everything, Mother? Gone. With the wind. <laughs> oh, yes. These walls used to echo to the sounds of happy laughter. We've been burgled. Where's Father? Are they taking Father? <laughs> no such luck, Timothy. What's that noise? They're cutting down the cherry orchard. <laughs> we haven't got a cherry orchard, but, oh, it's a trick. Surprise party, is it? Come out, everyone. Come out. The kitchen's gone. But of course it's gone. The house has been sold. Our lives here are finished. And it's all due to you, Timothy. All our few poor sticks of furniture have gone into store. Why? Where are you going, Mother? <laughs> Does it matter? All I wanted was to see you provided for, and you are. So take me to the station. Mother, I'm at the registry office at the moment. What I've come back for is the wedding ring. Where is it, please? Oh, it's all clean and bright. Good. The last service of a mother. Yes, all right then, Mother. Could I have it? Could I need yes, it? Yes, it's in my I hand. need it in eight minutes, Mother. Quick, quick! Oh, is this how it ends, with you shouting at me? Oh, give it to me, Mother, for goodness sake. You are such a stupid woman sometimes. Oh, yes. This stupid woman knows when it's time to go. Oh, yes. Goodbye. Yes. And may you have the happiness in life, Timothy, that I wish I'd had. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> had it all. What have you done, Mother? It's your fault, Timothy. Mother, you blocked me in. Oh, I might have known you were trying to do this to stop me getting there. Mother! to get there and back. Is it worth it, Mew? It's not going to be much of a wedding without him, is it? No, I suppose not. Is it always a crisis with you Lumsdens? Crisis? Things are going better than usual. <laughs> you spineless nerd! I am taking you to this wedding, whether you like it or not. Don't call me spineless. I've just punched my way clean through the living room door. Cos Mother locked me in, that's what for. I nearly broke three of my fingers. Don't call me spineless. Why didn't you get out of the window? Oh, yes, call me stupid. We're going to be late. It's like a sort of kung fu, you know. <laughs> it's a matter to leave. Sorry, martial art. Freudian slip. <laughs> oh, no! Today, please, God. Where are all these guests going to sit? I wonder. What guests? Well, she's invited 66 people, not including father. Only she never has included father. I flooded it. I have to sit on the floor, I expect. Don't snack, son. This one will be lying on the floor. He's dead. Dead? Are you sure? He donated his kidneys. <laughs> and these two are dead as well. The Culmers are in Botswana. Oh. And Jeremy Fisher is most unlikely. Well, is he ill? He's the frog in Beatrix Potter. <laughs> you mean Mother's been having me on? For 45 years. Oh, God. What? What? What's that? What are you doing? The lady wants the gravel here. 
Not now! What lady? 30 pounds, she said, to dump it here right away. We don't want it. Well, you're going to get it. 40 quid to take it away. 50 quid to dump it now. <laughs> Sold to the lady with the blue hair. <laughs> God, they're cutting it fine. Well, what did you expect, Frank? I tell you, if they put this lot in a play, even by a good writer, no one would believe them. Uh, I told you. <laughs> Sorry, I've never driven one of these things before. I ring the bastard. Come on! Get me down! Champagne red now. <laughs> here it is. Here, here it is. She's not here. <laughs> She's gone. They, they've all gone. It. Everything's gone. They've left me here all alone. <laughs> Half past four. Timothy's married. He's in Eastbourne. The honeymoon suite. Pretty girl, that. I still think she's more my type. <laughs> so, we open this door and there's a balcony. Very romantic in the evening, sir, for honeymooners. Uh, well, funny enough, I've been on this balcony before. Uh, that'll be all right, then? Yes, indeed. Thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Uh, have a nice day. Thank you. Ah, Eastbourne. Scene of my disasters and my triumph. Actually, it's quite a nice evening, you know. I think we're going to be able to have a picnic tomorrow. Beachy head. <laughs> I did tell you she'd stand you up at the altar. <laughs> Not turning up. Huh. Where did she go? Do we know? She went to the zoo, apparently. You know, she rang Frank. I see. Well, Lee said soon is mended. I'm going to enjoy two weeks at Eastbourne. <laughs> They've got a senior citizen's dance in the garden room on Tuesday. I'm sure we could get you in. <laughs> I told them you were 65. <laughs> 65? As young as that. <laughs> How many more of these pork scratching packets am I going to wade through? Only 36. That was as bad as being on that aeroplane. It's all my fault. No, it isn't. Ah, that's the ticket. <laughs> Have a scotch egg. <laughs> Have 20 scotch eggs. <laughs> Timothy. Jennifer. Sorry. Changing my mind like that. How was the zoo? Rather dull. I changed my mind again, but then I don't suppose you'd want to. Well, it's... Timothy, it's a... who are you talking to? I'll come round your side. What's going on? <coughs> oh. It's you. Well, Jennifer, I've got him and you haven't. Timothy, over here, jump. Stay here. He's not to jump, it's bad for him. Jump! Don't you dare. I'm jumping. <laughs> <laughs> 